Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you about another Jennifer Aniston film and this is Management. Now I am so, so sure I already recorded this video but I can't find it anywhere so I'm going to have to do it again. Um, so hopefully this one will actually work this time. So Management is a 2008 film. I actually thought it was a little bit older than that. I can't remember seeing it advertised in 2008. It just seems like it's been on for a lot longer. Um, but no, it's not that old. Um, now the first thing that struck me about this is the cover. The cover itself is basic, you know, normal white background, just two headshots. But it's Jennifer's hair that really got me. I have a bit of a, a weird fascination with Jennifer Aniston's hair. Sorry, the curtain is in the way. Because it always changes, you know, sometimes it's really straight, it's always different lengths and it's really, really nice. Um, but in this one, it's the shortest I've ever seen it. There's a better picture on the back of just how short it is, if you can see that. And I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing that the film, you're not supposed to be attracted to a film because of the length of somebody's hair. But that's just sort of what it made me think. Um, and it was just on the top of the pile, but when I picked it up, I was like, I really want to watch this because of Jennifer's hair. It was really weird. Um, but it was definitely worth watching anyway. Now, you've got quotes um, on the front. Somebody says, hilarious, that's Karen. Now, I'm going to try and pronounce this. Krasanovich, I think. Um, Karen Krasanovich, she says it's hilarious. And Life and Style says, Jennifer Aniston gives the best performance of her career. I'm not going to agree with that because I think the best performance of her career is certain things she's had to do in Friends, but that's just my opinion. But this, as a film, is really good. Um, basically, Jennifer's character, Sue, she goes to stay in a motel, um, Kingman Motel, which is owned by Mike's family. Um, and Mike sees Sue and he, he's sort of attracted to her, so he goes and knocks on the door in the night because he's like the nightman on the, in the motel. And he, and he knocks on the door and gives her complimentary wine. That is supposed to be a free gift from the, the motel for the first night. And then on the second night, he goes back and gives her free champagne, which obviously is just for Sue, not for anybody else. Um, and then she leaves, and that's it. But before that, they had a conversation, and he found out where she worked and things. So he flew out to where she works um, in Maryland. I can't remember the name of the company. Um, and he, he basically follows her, her around for a while. And it's him chasing after her and trying to get her attention. And he knows that she is right for him, but she doesn't know it. And it's basically, is she going to actually realise that this is what she's supposed, who she's supposed to be with and what she's supposed to be doing with her life? And it's just such a lovely connection between the two of them. So it's him chasing her around and is he ever going to get the girl? Kind of not, it's not too much of a typical love story because it's more of like a wild goose chase than anything else. And um, it's set all over the place, you know, it's really, really good. Um, and there's a few twists and things in it. I think there's like three major twists that I picked up on. My nail, my nail varnish is a mess. Um, there's three major twists I picked up on, and they really do alter the story slightly, make it go down different paths and things. So that is really, really nice. But the plot in general is just super fantastic. I love it. Um, also, the casting, the casting is just perfect. Obviously, you've got Jennifer, which is the main attraction for me. I wouldn't have even looked at this if it wasn't for Jennifer. Um, so Jen's films are just fantastic, I love them. And then you've got Steve Zahn who plays Mike, who I hadn't initially heard of. Um, but then when I checked his IMDB page, it turned out that I had. He played Marvin in Daddy Daycare, who is like the superhero nerd. He kind of reminds me of a bit like Trevor Lucier's character in Sabrina, Miles. Um, he also voiced um, Monty, the cat, from um, Stuart Little. Do you know the, the tabby cat that always goes, please? that cat um, and now that I know that I can actually hear his voice playing Monty which is really cute plus he's worked with Jennifer before he was in Friends and he didn't actually have a scene with Jennifer but he played Phoebe's husband Duncan in the one with Phoebe's husband um, which I again I didn't really twig I was like I, I, I kind of recognised him but I didn't really think I knew him from anywhere and I was like that's it he's from Friends so it was really nice to have that um, Jennifer also works with Paul Rudd in another film which I'll be talking about a couple of videos down the line I haven't watched it yet um, which is nice. It's also nice because there are a lot of really amazing people and friends who then go on to work with the different cast members and other projects, which is really cool. Um, and vice versa as well. So this is amazing film based on plot. It's fantastic. Cast, fantastic. Directing is fantastic. Um, produced by Stephen Belber. Um, the cat, can you see that? The cat is climbing up my back. He'll dig it down. Um, produced by Stephen Belber. Lovely, fantastic film in every way. Um, I just think it's perfect. It is a 15, I have to point out, there. And the reason given for this is contains strong language, which it does. It's always amazing to see, to hear, like, uh, Friends cast members swear. Mainly because it sort of gives you an insight as to what they'd sound like if Rachel were to swear or Monica were to swear. It's like a, a late night Friends episode, you know. If Friends was post-Watershed, what would it be like? Um, and while Sue is not really that much like, Je um, like Rachel Green, 
it, it's sort of just really nice. Um, so that is really great. Definitely worth buying if you can get hold of it. I think I paid about £4 for this, £5 from, I think I got this from eBay. But you can get it from eBay, um, Amazon, HMV, sometimes Asda, depends. Um, just basically any DVD store, check it. It won't cost you much, which is essentially a shame because I hate... Uh, a hiccup. <laughs> I hate seeing films go down to really cheap prices and Jennifer's films are always dirt cheap after they've been out for a few months I mean which is why I was going to order the, I was going to pre-order the Bounty Hunter but I thought well it's going to be cheap in a couple of months so I'll just wait um which for the record I am dying to see the Bounty Hunter I've heard some rocky reviews about it but I really really want to see it um so I'm thinking of buying that but then it's going to go cheap and I don't know why they all go really cheap because they're great films um, there, there are some films that are staying at £20, you know, like Sex and the City, the film, that's that's still quite expensive. Mamma Mia, kind of expensive. You know, all these films that are popular, whereas you've got this fantastic actress and they're, they're going for nothing, which is a shame, good for us, but, you know, it, there must be something for her pride if she knows about this. Um, but yeah, so definitely worth buying. Great plot, great cast, great production, great everything. Fantastic, I love it. It's not my favourite, even though it may sound like it. This is not my favourite gen film. Um, as it stands, my favourite is Love Happens. That may change. I've got more to watch. Um, but it's still definitely one of my favourites and definitely worth buying. I think that's all I want to say about that, actually. Um, perfect film. Love it completely. I'm sure you will, too. Um, feel free to leave comments and things. Let me know if you've got it or if you've seen it and that. Um, that's all I want to say, so I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.